Hello, my name is Paul Washer and I'm one of the workers here at the Heart Cry Missionary Society and I hope this, uh, this short video finds you growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I know that uh, there are many things that have been happening in the last few weeks and the lives of many have been, have been turned upside down, but I want you to know not according to me, but according to the scriptures, that we have an incorruptible king and he sits on an eternal throne and he does all things well. And there is not, as R.C. Sproul used to say, a maverick molecule in the universe. He is in control of absolutely everything. Now here at Heart Cry for the last few weeks, it's been, well, it's, it's been rather difficult. Uh, much of our staff is staying at home um, for two weeks, I had to sort of self-quarantine because I had been working with the Chinese, and then I came back into the United States, and, um, well, I had to be extra careful, but I seemed to be healthy. Uh, my dear brother, Sean Reese, was over in the Middle East and had great difficulty making it back to heart cry, but after uh, also 14 days of uh, quarantine, he's also doing well. Um, Although I work here at Heart Cry, I'm not over all, all the world. Uh, I have a few places that are very um, special to me that I work with personally, and they are France and Italy and Spain. And I want you to know that, that all three of those countries have been hit very, very hard. And most of our missionaries are, are quarantined and the churches are not allowed to meet. Um, a few of the men associated with us, we have had great fear that they had the coronavirus. Uh, one of them was very sick, but seems to be improving greatly now by the Lord's mercy. Uh, the men, I can assure you, around the world, not just in, in Italy and Spain and France, but the men around the world that are working with Heart Cry are doing everything they can to keep advancing the gospel. Many of them are having to meet uh, with their churches uh, via the internet to continue a ministry of teaching and encouragement. Uh, myself, I have spent a great deal of time on the internet uh, teaching and encouraging. I just uh, finished a, a meeting this morning uh, with believers in a house church in China, and I was teaching them on the, on the local church. You see, yes, there is a great problem. Um, but our, this great problem is not our primary concern. Our primary concern is advancing the gospel of Jesus Christ, even in the light of this problem, and in the edification of his church around the world. And so, yes, you need to think about these things. You need to take precautions. But also at the same time, we cannot lose our vision. And what is that vision? Of taking the gospel of Jesus Christ to every person on this planet. Every person on this planet. You know, so many people have come to me or, or written me and they said, you know, Brother Paul, is this the judgment of God upon wicked nations? Well, you know, we do know that God judges the wickedness of nations. And we know, especially from Romans 1, that God's wrath is revealed against unrighteousness, those who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. So there are judgments of God. And, and I am sure that God is working in many ways, many different ways, uh, through this present crisis. But I, I would like to turn your attention as believers to something that I think is being greatly neglected. And uh, this morning I had a conversation with one of the elders where, I, where I'm a member, one of the elders over me, Anthony Mathenia, and we were talking about this, this specific uh, matter of the judgment of, judgment of God. And he said something very, very important. And it's in 1 Peter uh, chapter 4, verse 17. And I think it will maybe redirect us a bit with regard to our focus. It says, For it is time for judgment to begin with the household of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? You know, Instead of being preoccupied with whether or not this is the judgment of God upon the nations, we should ask ourselves, what is God doing with us? What is he showing us? Could he be showing us that we're far too preoccupied with the temporal? Could he be showing us that we are 
far too independent and powerful on our own? Is he teaching us to need him more or to recognize our need of him? Is he teaching us to seek him in the word? Is he teaching us to pray more? Is he teaching us to focus on those things that are eternal? Dear brothers and sisters, listen to me. I, I, I work in missions. I mean, it's uh, just about every waking moment has something to do with missions and missionaries. But even in that context, I can get distracted. You know, there are so many things in life. There's the, the raising of children, the taking care of family, paying bills, problems with the plumbing in the bathroom. There's all sorts of things. And we are so prone to get out of focus and we forget. And then especially in times when things seem like they're going good, we do not cleave unto the Lord as we ought to. And then there's so much that goes on in the evangelical world today that, that we know is not pleasing to God. And so instead of concerning ourselves so much with the nations, and we should be, but we should also turn attention to the church as a whole and ask ourselves, where do we need to repent? Where to, do we need to make major, uh, major changes? And then look at ourselves as individuals. Have we become too independent? Are we not clinging unto the Lord as we ought to? Are we not studying His Word? Are we not praying? Have we been distracted by, by temporal pleasures and temporal blessings? And so all these things are, are very, very important. And I'm going to have to leave you to decide on the matter. I can't stand as your jury or judge. I need to look myself in the mirror of God's word and ask myself, Lord, in this time of, of, of loving and yet certain discipline, what major changes should I make in my life? Now, having said that, let's go back to something. The Great Commission still stands. It still stands. And it's, it's one of the great places where we find our, our purpose and the meaning in our life that we have been called not to serve a king who is corruptible, not to give our lives to a country that's temporal, but we have been called to serve an eternal king, an incorruptible king with an eternal kingdom who's done it all, who's done it all. The life that we could not live, he lived on our behalf. The penalty we could not pay except through an eternity of condemnation, he paid on Calvary. He did it all. And he has made us sons and daughters of God. And we ought to rise up in that with triumph. Yes, even in the midst of suffering and even in the midst of, of fear, we're not immune to those things. But we need to focus on his kingdom and the advancement of that kingdom. And you say, well, Brother Paul, I'm shut up in my house. Well, then be shut up to God. You know, what, does, what do our wives need from us more than anything else, gentlemen, that we be more Christ-like? Uh, dear sister, what does your husband need of you that you be more Christ-like? What does the church need of all of us that we be more Christ-like? What does the world need that we be more like Christ? So if you have time on your hands, I want to encourage you, get in the Word of God and get on your knees and grow. Also, never forget that love for God manifests itself in love for people. And, and sometimes we neglect the people who are closest to us. And what I mean by that is our, our wives, our husbands, our children. Spend time with them. Enjoy them. Look at them in a different way. Look at them, not morbidly, but look at them in, in, in the reality that we are mortal, that life doesn't last forever, that every drop of it is precious, and it ought to be used in the name of Christ, loving our families, loving our brothers and sisters in Christ, and living for a purpose. You know, years ago in the jungle, I heard someone say this, tu vives porque el aire es gratis. And what it means in English is the only reason you're alive is because air is free. That so many people, even though they may be wealthy, well thought of, that they really have no purpose to their life except that which is temporal. Seek the Lord in this time and come out on the other end of it, more Christ-like, 
and more focused. God is definitely showing us that this world is not our home. It's not the place for us. And no matter how strong a people or a government or a kingdom, it will all soon crumble to dust. So let us, let us give ourselves to Christ in a greater way. And when we come through this trial, let us be more useful servants of the Most High God. And keep in your mind those missionaries, the, the indigenous missionaries, the cross-cultural missionaries that are far away from home, that are in dangerous places. Pray for them, but also pray that they will excel. You know, when Paul was in prison, you know, he didn't say, I'm in prison, so now I can't do anything. He you know, he said, even this is going to work out for the benefit of the gospel. Brethren, I'm not one of those who will tell you that if you serve Christ, you're never going to suffer. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you, you are. You're going to pass through terrible trials sometimes and losses and heartbreak. But know this, it's a win-win situation because of Christ, because of our elder brother who's done it all. Look to him for help, but also look to him asking, Lord, how might I serve thee when I come through this tunnel? How might I redirect my life and use it for your glory? Now, I am convinced that he who began a good work in you will finish it. God bless you and keep going.